How can one deploy warriors to the battlefield safely? This is the TV program Weapons, and today we're talking about combat vehicles. On our show today, what's the difference between armored personnel carriers and infantry fighting vehicles? What kind of protection can the arm of military vehicles give? Why is IFV called a mass grave of infantry? What is IFV's blind spot? In which direction is the development of armored vehicles moving? The idea of armored protection for vehicles appeared shortly after the invention of the engine, and soon it grew onto invisible fighting machines. Mankind invented the first armored vehicle in the third millennium BC. It was the chariot. Transport carts with arsenals, which were taken by commanders to the battlefield to supply troops with weapons and chariots, mobile fighting units, were the ancestors of modern armored personnel carriers and infantry fighting vehicles. The prototype of modern APCs were Batka Machno's Tachankas, horse-drawn machine platform carts of the Civil War. They transported not only infantry itself, but the machine guns and ammunition. The speed of Mahno's Tachanka's unit was equal to the speed of the cavalry. His troops easily made 100 kilometers per day and could move for several days in a row. But the real revolution in warfare was the use of protective armor. Such cars appeared before the First World War. They usually were made from trucks and equipped with armor and weapons, machine guns or cannons. By the late 30s, the bodied all-terrain chassis were invented. Full-drive wheels with light tracks. But the APC in the modern sense was built by the British during the First World War. Originally, it was a Mark 9 transport tank on the base of Mark 1, which served to deploy 50 infantrymen to the battlefield. During the time of two world wars, armored personnel carriers saw rapid development, but only in Western countries. Soon, the contemporary versions of these machines were created in the USSR. The difference between the infantry fighting vehicles and armored personnel carriers isn't their combat assignment. APC is a vehicle to transport soldiers, and IFV is a fighting machine for direct combat. APC moves on wheels and IFV on tracks. Because of APC's wheel drive, it is much faster than the IFV on roads with improved surface. The armor of APCs is weaker than that of IFVs, and this is a fundamental difference between these machines. But to understand this, we need help of real professionals and simulated combat conditions. On the Desna training ground, which is the best in Ukraine, soldiers are trained to operate combat vehicles. There are a few basic exercises for drivers, from the elementary, starting the engine, to complicated maneuvers. Experienced instructors teach them all about modern warfare. One of the most qualified instructors is senior soldier Mykola Altukhov. He is serving in separate regiment of the President of Ukraine. He gives combat training to recruits of the Ukrainian armed forces and is a real master of his craft. People believe the APC is just an armored car on wheels. Is that really so? Let's speak to our specialist Mykola. To understand the APC, we'll start with the mammoth among the Soviet armored personnel carriers, BTR-70. The 70 in the title is the year of its creation, and despite its archaism, the principles of APC design and configuration have not changed much to date. This model can deploy equipment and riflemen, motorized infantry and airborne personnel to the battleground just as well as its modern counterparts. It also provides effective evacuation of the wounded from the battlefield. That's why these machines are used as training vehicles to teach young soldiers. The only thing in BTR-70 that is distinctly different from modern models is its two engines. Tell me what kind of engine is installed here. 
We have twin gas engines here. Does it use much fuel every 100 kilometers? About 80 liters per 100 kilometers. I've also heard about the Kamaz engines. Kamaz engines are used in BTR-80 and in the new BTR-3E and 4E. But what is practical? The last ones, because if you stop one of the twin engines, right or left, axles turn off and you lose the power and speed. It's not that good in a combat situation. It can float. By what means does it do that? By turbines, at the bottom of the machine, it filters water. Like the water bike? Exactly like the water bike. It's running like the pump. It pumps out the water and the speed is 10 kilometers per hour. Can it fly? Unfortunately, it can't. Crew, three persons. Passengers, seven troopers. Length, 7.65 meters. Width, 2.8 meters. Height, 2.32 meters. Ground clearance, 47.5 centimeters. Main armament, two machine guns. Caliber, 14.5 and 7.62 millimeters. Speed, 80 kilometers per hour. Engine, two 120 horsepower. Operational range, 600 kilometers. Let's go, show me the inside. Do you remember the first experience of getting into an APC? How did you feel? Awesome, because you can feel the power under your seat. It breaks it all, not like in a car. If there's a good driver, can he just sit here and drive on? A good driver must know his vehicle, what, where and how to handle it. He must watch over it and drive it right. For example, in combat situations, if a vehicle was hit by an explosive projectile, he doesn't know what to do with it and it's just standing there. The driver must know his job. Those are battlements, I understand. Yes, that's battlements. You push here, they open. The riflemen, who are transported in the APC, can shoot through them. They put out assault rifles and open fire. But while shooting through battlements, the powder gases are admitted inside the machine and no one can pass out. So there is a filter which is moving the air all around. Like air conditioning? Yes, just like an air conditioner. It pulls the fresh air in and pushes the polluted air out. Who can take the commander's place if something happens to him? A machine gunner can do it. Can he take the command? Yes, riflemen can sit here and take on the machine gun, and a machine gunner becomes a vehicle commander. I say the teams should be working well together. Does the turret rotate mechanically? Is it hard to move? It is on gear wheels. If well oiled, it can be twisted with a finger. So are mechanics are better than electronics? You know, electronics can fail. Are mechanics more reliable? If the mechanics break down, you can get up and fix it yourself. And with electronics, you need to take the machine back there to fix it. What are the drawbacks of the BTR-70, in your opinion? I would add more space and have the door remade. Could you fall under the wheels? If you go 7 or 8 kilometers an hour, for example, it's okay. But if it goes at 20, there's a possibility you won't be able to get out. For example, if the BTR is burning and you need to get out, and it's still rolling, you can be wounded on the wheel. Let's go and check the armor. Yeah, let's go. How many people could fit on the armor? And actually, where's safer, outside or inside? You're much safer inside, because when you are under gunfire, it's more likely that you'll survive. But you go outside on the armor when you are moving in the column. An APC can take more troops on the armor, like two or three squads. When a grenade hits the APC, it causes air compression when all the hatches are closed, and there's a high probability that everyone inside will burn. Do you mean a vacuum? Yes, the vacuum can kill everyone. When the hatches are open, air is not compressed and flows over the top, but the driver is in the most vulnerable position. The crew can get out and most likely survive. But if the hatches are closed, then you won't be able to even open them, and the vacuum kills you. I know many drivers who suffered during the anti-terrorist operation in such circumstances, and someone had his face burned. Is it difficult for him to get out? Yes, that's why his hatch should always be closed. In BTR-70, the crew commander and the driver sit in front of the whole team. Behind them is the position of two riflemen. Machine gunner operates the main weapon in the turret. Behind him, another three riflemen, a grenadier and a sniper. 
If one of the crew members dies, one of his comrades replaces him. Thank you, and I wish you luck in your service for the people of Ukraine. See you soon. Take care. What is most important is the coordination of the team. Lives and combat missions depend on it. Although BTR-70 is not bad, it's far from the most modern version of combat vehicles in service of our armed forces. Now we move on from the Soviet past to the Ukrainian present to show the competitiveness of our national weapons on a worldwide stage. This is the Kiev armor plant, where Ukrainian engineers and technicians are resurrecting the fighting vehicles so they could wreak havoc on the enemies of Ukraine. Kiev armor plant was founded in 1935. It provides overhaul and modernization of battle armor and engineering vehicles as well as other military equipment. Among its main activities is the production of BTR-3E, renovation of tanks and other armored vehicles. Local specialists are not just producing weapons to defend their homeland against aggressors, but also fulfill export contracts with other countries, including Myanmar, Thailand, UAE, Kazakhstan, Sudan, Nigeria, Chad and many more. Kiev is not only famous for its cake, but also for its APCs. With the BTR-3E, the enemy's life stops being that sweet. BTR-3E is an amphibious combat wheeled vehicle, weighing 16 tons, with outstanding maneuverability and firepower. It was developed and created by Kharkiv Machine Building Design Bureau, named after Alexander Morozov. This purely Ukrainian design not only makes one proud, but also shows that domestic weapons are quite competitive on the global market. Crew, three persons. Passengers, six persons. Length, 7.65 meters. Width, 290 centimeters. Height, 2.86 meters. Ground clearance, 46 centimeters. Main armament, 30 millimeter cannon. Machine gun, 7.62 millimeters. Speed, 100 kilometers per hour. Engine 300 horsepower. Operational range 600 kilometers. BTR-3E is a combination of simplicity and technology. Its price on the foreign market is 1.3 million US dollars. The vehicle provides the crew with standard conditions for working at ambient temperatures up to 55 degrees Celsius. BTR-3E can be furnished with three combat modules, Squall, Thunder and Storm. They are all designed and manufactured in Ukraine. Threaded automatic 30mm gun is set with 200 shells. Ammunition amount for the 7.62mm machine gun is 500 rounds. Target detection in the fire control system is carried out by means of television cameras and optical electronic module. The next level of armored combat vehicle is the IFV. Its force and firepower is beyond any doubt. But let's check everything out step by step. The pioneer, or rather the grandmother of infantry fighting vehicles of the evil empire was the BMP-1. Today, its configuration is considered a classic. The further development of infantry fighting vehicles in the USSR was based on it. Crew, three persons. Passengers, eight persons. Length, 6.73 meters. Width, 2.94 meters. Height, 1.92 meters. Ground clearance, 37 centimeters. Main armament, 73 millimeter cannon and 7.62 millimeter machine gun. Speed, 65 kilometers per hour. Engine, 300 horsepower. Operational range, 600 kilometers. At the time of its creation, BMP-1 was far more superior to all the armored vehicle models in its class. But in fact, the first IFVs were far from perfect. Their noses would run deep into the water, and the vehicles would simply drown crossing water obstacles at high speed. 
Also, the elevation angle of the BMP-1 cannon is too small. Early on, the new IFW got an ironic nickname based on its Russian transcription, the common grave of the infantry. The Afghan war proved that the Soviet armored vehicles were not protected enough from projectiles and vulnerable to explosives. When the APC and the IFW BMP-1 hit a mine, the whole crew and passengers died. And if the troopers sat on top of the vehicle, they became easy prey for shooters or victims of fragmentation mines. Thus, BMP-1 was replaced by BMP-2. Crew, three persons. Passengers, eight persons. Length, 6.73 meters. Width, 2.85 meters. Height, 2.45 meters. Ground clearance, 42 centimeters. Main armament, 30 millimeter automatic cannon and 7.62 millimeter machine gun. Speed 65 kilometers per hour. Engine 400 horsepower. Operational range 600 kilometers. To demonstrate the combat power of BMP-2 automatic gun, we've got 300 liter metal barrels filled with water. That's what happens to a cask after it gets hit with a 30 millimeter armor-piercing projectile. The firepower of BMP-2 is much more superior to the performance of BMP-1. First of all, the main gun stabilizer allows the vehicle to conduct an effective firefight on the run. And secondly, the possibility of battling with helicopters and warplanes. These machines were sent to Afghanistan and the group of Soviet forces in Germany. Today we have BMP-2, the queen of modern armored vehicles at the Desna training ground. Vadim Petrusenko will tell us more about it. Vadim Petrusenko, senior quartermaster sergeant of the military unit. He took part in the anti-terrorist operation in eastern Ukraine. So now he shares his combat experience with soldiers on the training ground. We have two infantry fighting vehicles. Tell us about the difference between them. They look pretty much alike, but... These vehicles differ in weapons and the number of crew members. BMP-1 crew consists of 10 persons, BMP-2, 11 persons. BMP-1 is 73 millimeters caliber of the main gun, BMP-2, 30 millimeters. Which caliber is better? The caliber of BMP-1 is better, but there is a negative there, the amount of ammunition. It can only carry 40 rounds. Meaning less? Yes, it's less, but they are more effective. It means if you make a clear shot, you could even take down a tank with one shell. Every vehicle has its pros and cons. For example, you can hit air targets like helicopters with the main gun of the BMP-2. What kind of weapon is that? It's the same gun, a 30 mm 2.42 cannon. You can shoot air targets with it. It has a larger quantity of ammunition, 500 shells, 240 armor-piercing rounds with tracers, and 260 high-explosive fragmentation tracer rounds. These machines can move on both land and water. So you mean they can swim? Yes, but of course their swimming speed is lower than moving by land. 7 to 12 kilometers per hour is the speed on water. The speed on a dirt road is up to 70 kilometers, but actually it can reach speeds of up to 100 kilometers per hour. And what does the armor protect you from? It protects from the assault rifle, from a machine gun, a 7.62 caliber, and a direct hit with the 120 millimeter mines. Nothing will happen, the fragments will scatter in different directions. We hid like this ourselves. Another model, which is very rare for Ukraine, BMP-3. It was created shortly before the collapse of the Soviet Union, so only a few of them are left. During the Cold War, the USSR had created a super-heavy IFV made entirely from aluminium. It was provided with a protection system against nuclear, biological and chemical weapons. This became possible due to the strength, 
stiffness and tightness of the hull and turret, as well as special linings and air filtering equipment. The frontal armor of BMP-3 can withstand a direct hit of a 30mm projectile from a distance of 200 meters. The roof and sides can stop a 12.7mm bullet fired from 100 to 200 meters. After the installation of additional armor modules, the weight of the vehicle increased up to 22.4 tons, but it didn't affect the reliability of the undercarriage. As regards modern IFVs, Ukraine is not taking a backseat. Kharkiv Armor Plant has already developed a heavy infantry fighting vehicle, BMP V-64. State concern Ukr Oboron Prom is set to release BMP V-64 in the near future. The modern trend is upgrading and rearming tanks. Ukraine can produce them as well as APCs without any foreign assistance. The state has a closed-loop cycle production of armored vehicles. Does the modern army use both a BMP-1 and BMP-2? Yes, they use them, but in the ATO zone it's mostly BMP-1. Let's go. Sure, let's ride. So our soldiers have to do their job using machinery inherited from the military-industrial complex of the USSR, which actually is a good ground for the creation of modern armored vehicles of the Ukrainian army, namely BTR-3E, BMPV-64, and of course the upgraded BMP-2, which can decently stand up to the aggressor thanks to the skill of our military. These horses are not brand new, but you've seen with your own eyes how much skill our guys handle them with. The main point is professionalism. This was the TV program Weapons. See you soon.